Welcome to Canadian Justice. I'm Christine Van Gein, and today we're talking about when and how the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms applies outside the borders of our country. Are Canadian officials acting outside of our country constrained by the Charter? Or is there, an unconst or is there unconstrained action by Canadian officials abroad? The issue was recently considered by the Supreme Court of Canada in the case of McGregor and the Queen. The charity that I work for, the Canadian Constitution Foundation, was an intervener in that case, arguing for a new test on how and when the Charter applies outside the country. The underlying facts of the case are disturbing. They involve sexual assault, voyeurism, hidden cameras, Canada's military, and this question of whether the Canadian Charter applied to the search of the accused, McGregor's, home. Here today to talk about the case and what the CCF has proposed for improving the law are two experts. Joanna Barron is the executive director of the Canadian Constitution Foundation, and Jesse Hardery is a lawyer with McCarthy Tetro who represented the CCF at the Supreme Court. Uh, thank you both so much for joining me today. Joanna, I'll start with you. What can you tell me about the underlying facts in this case? Uh, and while I'll note that the underlying facts and the alleged crimes are not really part of what the Supreme Court was considering, it's important context for our viewers. Yeah, so very briefly, McGregor was a corporal with the armed forces. He was stationed at the Canadian Embassy in Washington. And in 2017, a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, a woman, discovered a recording device at her home in Virginia. And so an investigation by the Canadian Forces was commenced um, and McGregor was suspected. So the Armed Forces worked with, or rather the Forces Investigation Services worked with local police. They got a U.S. search warrant that will be important for McGregor's home. Uh, they searched his home. They found a laptop, a computer hard drive, and those devices contained, as you mentioned, disturbing recordings, which allegedly will ma were made by McGregor. Um, they showed two different victims um, engaged in various intimate acts. Um, and so what was inferred was that McGregor allegedly installed hidden recording devices in one case in an individual's home, including her bedroom and her bathroom. Really, really disturbing um, what they found. And we can't forget that these the victims in this case, there's, there's a publication and ban in place, but uh, these are the reported facts and we need to keep them in mind. Um, now, Jesse, is there anything to add about um, why the CCF was an intervener in this case? Was CCF um, arguing in support of McGregor, against McGregor, or sort of for something else entirely? So the CCF was intervening in this case, not necessarily to take a side on the, on the merits, but primarily to address the legal questions that were at issue in the courts below and before the Supreme Court of Canada. So the case involved uh, the precedent from 2007, uh, R versus Hape, which is a decision from the Supreme Court of Canada that essentially held that as a general rule, the charter does not apply abroad subject to narrow exceptions. And one of those exceptions is if the host state, so here the United States, consents to the application of the charter. So the, the real question at the heart of this appeal um, is really a fact situation that, it that could apply in many cases. So the CCF's goal was really to provide assistance to the court on the legal issue of whether the charter applies abroad um, as a matter of course or not, and then how that framework should be applied going forward. So Jesse, the main question here, when the charter applies outside of Canada, can you explain why this should matter to Canadians? Well, it, it matters because Canadians ultimately deserve to know that when they're abroad, um, they won't be subject to arbitrary actions by the Canadian government or its officials. So in 1982, of course, when we adopted the charter, Canada made a choice um, in adopting those rights to subject Parliament and the executive to constraints, constitutional constraints. And of course, we say, and we'll get into this, while the charter analysis has to account for the executive's ability to act abroad in contexts like this, it would fundamentally be inconsistent with the choice that was made in 1982 to say that the executive is completely immune from scrutiny um, by the courts. And, and in our view, Section 32 of the Charter, which is the, uh, the Charter that the, the section that speaks to uh, the applicability of the Charter, is really clear in, in this regard. 
Joanna, we've got to go to commercial break, but when I when we come back, I want to ask you the same question. Uh, how how do you think the case is is relevant to Canadians? I don't want to be too high level here because I think this really matters, and and we need a good explanation of why. We'll be right back. <laughs> 